three migration run-throughs for different vendors. The other two were ASA and Checkpoint. This one, we're going to walk through a ScreenOS migration. Before we start on the migration, I'm going to do a quick recap of the golden rules for firewall migration using the migration tool. We we'll go through these in more depth in the Checkpoint video, but just so that uh, we get a chance to recap those here, here's the, the quick uh, run through of the migration, uh, migration golden rules uh, one more time. Uh, first, only use the migration tool for the tasks that, the, that you cannot do anywhere else. Uh, use it for the specific things that um, it's uh, best designed for and for other things, use them in other, uh, do the updates in other places such as PanOS. Uh, when you do the phase one migration, um, you want to migrate your configuration as close to like for like as possible. Uh, three, make sure that you take notes on everything that you do or think about during the migration and use that as your, your checklist of items to uh, double check before you do your cutover. And number four, verify everything that the migration tool does. Just make sure that you get some human eyes on it to make sure that there's no errors or corruption anywhere in the process. And five, whenever you run into any kind of bugs, send those in. Um, the, want to make sure that uh, any bugs you run into get addressed as quickly as possible. Uh, next, again, this was covered in the checkpoint video, but these are the, the eight items that the migration tool is best utilized to convert tags, address objects, address groups, service service groups, uh, security rules, and that rules, and sometimes routes. So those are the things that uh, you should be focusing on using the migration tool to convert or to pan OS. On to ScreenOS specific topics. Uh, these are the main caveats and differences between ScreenOS and PanOS that you need to be aware of when doing a migration from ScreenOS. Um, the first thing and the biggest thing is that ScreenOS combines security rules and NAT rules into one uh, rule set. Uh, this is very important to keep in mind if you're not familiar with ScreenOS configurations. The uh, migration tool will separate those out into two separate rule steps, as is you know, the norm for PanOS. But keep in mind that those NAT rules that have been migrated will look an awful lot like security rules, because that's the information that the migration tool has to go from. And that may not be appropriate for a PanOS configuration. So you need to take a look at that. It is a little bit of a deviation from the like-for-like -like migration, but that's just because that screen, screen OS and pan OS do things differently in regards to, to NAT. So that does require some adjustment. Important to note that NAT rules cannot be written with non-TCP or UDP services, so you can't use apps for NAT rules. And uh, sometimes NET screen rules are written that way, and that will certainly require adjustment. And we'll go through that in a little bit more in depth when we do the run through. A uh, screen OS may have global rules, and those will generally be migrated, as you would expect, as any any rules. But you should be mindful that they're there and, and review them uh, specifically. ScreenOS also has a tendency to migrate in source port ranges. And they may have the entire range, so 0 to 65, 535, which is pretty much an unnecessary configuration. It's not going to hurt anything, but it's also not necessarily something that you need to have there. So you may or may not decide to strip that out. Um, as is the typical with all the vendors, um, there may be address groups that have more than 500 members or more than 2,000 members if you're migrating to 7.1 and above. And you have to split these into nested address groups since we have a, an upper limit on the number of objects in any single group. And the migration tool will do that for you, but you have to run that feature. And then the other typical thing for all the vendors is that non-TCP and UDP services have to be converted to app ID. Now that said, we'll go ahead and do a quick run through of a ScreenOS migration. So we have our migration tool running here. Log in. As usual, the first thing we do is check for updates. See if there have been any, any uh, new updates or bug fixes since the last time we ran this. This will take a second. And it looks like we're good, same version that we had before. So I'm going to create a new project here. We'll call this at screen test. And 
and we have our new project. I'm going to go in and uh, import a a blank config as a template. In this case, I'm going to use a firewall template for 7.1. And then I'm going to, not there. Then I'm going to import the ScreenOS configuration. So ScreenOS, you just need a single file. It's usually a text file. It's the format, if you look at it, is a bunch of uh, set commands. So now we have that. First thing we're going to do is just verify that we actually imported something. Make sure that we have some security rules that are present. And yeah, we do. We've got some security rules there. And I'm actually going to take this opportunity to go back and look at the stats for this import. Um, this is a good page to look at just to get a broad overview of what has been imported. And what's important here is to uh, make note of what has been imported and actually write these. This is probably the first thing you'll write down in that running list of notes that you're going to keep for the entire duration of your migration. So in this case, we've got 3,100 objects, address objects. Uh, one is duplicate, 119 services, two are invalid. There's eight address groups, 32 service groups, 114 security rules, and 78 NAT rules. So You'll keep that information and use that to cross-check later on when you're doing your, your final verifications. It's also a good time to do a sanity check on that. Next thing I want to take a look at here is the logs. So when the migration tool does an import of the logs, it's going to make note of anything that uh, it needs to tell you about. And it's always a good thing to take a look and see what it is noting. Keep in mind, this does not a complete list of logs of what the migration tool did or even of errors. So this is just one of many places you have to look to make sure that uh, you understand what's going on on this migration. But uh, it's always a good first place to look. In this case, it's creating service groups for some uh, services of more than one protocol. No action needed here, which is fine. Uh, there are a few ALGs in rules, rule tool 22739. And you may or may not need to make any adjustments here. Um, you don't need to add the app ID to rule to get the ALG functionality, but there may be some um, things that you need to do to make those ALGs work correctly in this environment. To do that, you're going to have to go back to the original config during the rest of your migration and work with your customer. This is not something you need to handle the migration tool, however. This is a, an important note here. We've got a couple of notes for uh, services that are, are not valid or not convertible, ICMP and R RPC. And it's converted those as these generic placeholders of destination port 65,000. Uh, those are definitely going to have to be uh, addressed um, here in the migration tool. So we will definitely make a note of that in our, in our log. That said, our next thing that we'll just take a quick look at is the network side. Look at the interface.